When planning for emergencies and SHTF scenarios, most people put access to clean, drinkable water as the number one necessity on their lists. Gravity-fed water filters, often marketed as the ideal solution for prepping and survival scenarios, have become a popular choice. These systems are designed to filter water from sources like lakes, rivers, or even rain, promising to turn it into safe drinking water. But do they really live up to their claims? To make an informed choice, it's important to understand how these filters work and what they actually can and cannot do. And most importantly of all, what the manufacturers tell you about their products and what the truth really is. So how do gravity-fed water filters work? Gravity-fed water filters are actually pretty simple. They operate by allowing water to flow from an upper chamber through a filter and into a lower chamber, relying on gravity to do the work. So they're basically a fancified version of the do-it-yourself filter of sand, charcoal, gravel, and a filtering paper or cloth. The filters inside are usually made of activated carbon or ceramic and a lot inclu include additional substances like silver to help prevent bacterial growth. While these systems can remove some impurities and improve the taste of water, their actual ability to handle untreated water from natural sources is more limited than people realize. The problem with marketing claims. One major issue with these filters is the way they're marketed. Many companies suggest that their systems are suitable for filtering untreated surface water in emergency scenarios, but this can be misleading. Let's look at some of the common claims and the potential issues with those claims. Pathogen removal. While these filters can handle certain bacteria, they often struggle to remove smaller pathogens like viruses. And this is especially bad in emergencies where water sources might be contaminated with both. Unverified longevity. Many brands claim their filters can process thousands of gallons of water before needing replacement. For example, some systems claim a lifespan of up to 6,000 gallons. Some claim 3,000 gallons per filter. Well, that all sounds great, right? But without third-party certifications or any independent testing, it's hard to verify if these filters remain effective for that long, especially when handling untreated water. Disinfection misconceptions. Some manufacturers highlight that their filters use silver, a material known for its antimicrobial properties. Well, this might lead customers to believe that these filters also disinfect water. However, silver in these filters doesn't kill pathogens in the water. It's pretty much primarily there to keep bacteria from growing inside the filter itself. And organizations like the Environmental Protection Agency and others do not recognize silver as an effective water disinfectant. Certification and testing. What's missing? When choosing a water filter, certifications from reputable organizations can give you confidence that a product works as promised. ANSI Standard 42 certifies that a filter is for improving water taste and removing chlorine. ANSI Standard 53 verifies that a filter can reduce harmful contaminants like lead. Unfortunately, many gravity-fed water filters on the market lack these certifications. Without them, there's no way to know if the filter can reliably handle contaminant it claims to remove. Even some of the most popular brands, including the biggest brand name in this category, don't submit their products for independent testing, raising questions about the truth of their claims. What about long-term use? Another concern with gravity-fed water filters is their potential for recontamination over time. Here's how this happens. Filters remove chlorine and other disinfectants from the water, which means bacteria can start to grow in the filtered water or inside the filter itself. While the silver in the filter can temporarily slow down bacterial growth, its effectiveness diminishes over time, sometimes within a few months. Studies have shown that using a filter for too long without proper maintenance or changing can actually lead to higher bacterial counts in the filtered water than in the source water. 
This is especially risky during emergencies when you might not have access to replacement filters. The role of disinfection. One of the most important points to understand is that filtration and disinfection are not the same thing. While a gravity-fed filter can remove impurities and some bacteria, it's not designed to filter water or kill pathogens like viruses and certain types of bacteria. To ensure your water is safe, you need to use additional methods of disinfection. Boiling. Bringing water to a rolling boil for at least one minute or three minutes at high altitude kills most pathogens. I personally believe in erring on the side of safety and always say 10 minutes of boiling, probably overkill, but it beats having dysentery. Chemical disinfectants. Products like unscented household bleach or iodine tablets can neutralize harmful microorganisms. UV light treatment. Portable UV light devices can quickly disinfect water, though they work best on clear water and might need to be combined with filtration. Sunlight can also provide UV treatment, but should definitely be used with other methods. So the bigger picture, regulatory issues. Regulatory challenges have also shed some light on the limitations of some of these gravity-fed water filters. For example, the EPA required one major manufacturer, again, the biggest name in gravity-fed filters, to register its filters as pesticide devices under the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. This was because their filters used silver, which the EPA classifies as a pesticidal substance. During this process, the company had to acknowledge that the silver in their filters doesn't kill pathogens, but only protects the filter itself. But protects the filter from what exactly? Well, the court filings show that this company stated the silver was embedded into the carbon filter to aid as an antimicrobial component for the filter itself, quote, when used to improve taste, color, and odor from municipally treated tap water, unquote. Tap water, not lakes, streams, rain, or river water. This kind of transparency isn't always present in the marketing of the filters, which can lead to misunderstandings about what these systems can actually do. Digging through court papers, the EPA, ANSI standards, and other rabbit holes is the only way you're going to find this stuff. You're certainly not going to find it in the marketing department. So I've placed resource links in the description for all of the information I'm sharing in this video. Practical advice for preppers. Gravity-fed water filters can still be valuable, but only if you understand their limitations and use them correctly. So here's how to make the most of your water filtration system. Don't rely on the filtration alone. Always have a backup method for disinfecting the water, like bleach, boiling, or UV treatment. Check for certifications. Look for the filter companies that have been tested to ANSI standards to ensure they've been independently verified. Replace your filters regularly. Follow the manufacturer's guidelines for replacing the filters, and don't wait too long, especially if you're using untreated water. Educate yourself. Understand the difference between filtration and disinfection so you can make informed decisions about your water treatment. While gravity-fed water filters are a convenient option for improving water quality, they're not a one-stop solution for emergency preparedness. They're great for removing certain impurities and improving taste, but they fall short when it comes to disinfecting water and handling long-term use. By combining filtration with other methods of water treatment and choosing products with verified certifications, you can ensure you're going to have access to safe, clean water when it matters the most.